Welcome back to The Bible Says What? Today I will summarize Romans chapter 9, where Paul discussed the Israeli people, true Israel, fake Israel, and Gentiles. Paul began teaching and said he was being completely honest when he said this, that he wishes he could take the place and be cursed by God in exchange for all the Israeli people to be saved. He looked on these people as brothers and told them that they were the chosen race to whom the covenants and the temple service and the giving of the law and the people group where the Christ came forth in the flesh. But Paul explained, most of this people group went down the wrong path. Isaiah referred to this people and said, even though this people is as numerous as the sand of the seashore, only a small remnant will be saved. Paul said God's promises had not failed. Even if people did not believe his word, that did not matter. Not everyone who descended from Abraham is considered true Israel. Paul said, remember when God said, through Isaac, your descendants would be named? It wasn't through Ishmael, the child of the flesh, that the promise would be fulfilled. It was through Isaac, the child of the promise. Paul taught, all of you who rely on being a Jew and think you are true Israel, remember something. God chooses and makes the decision on who he will save and who he will show mercy to. Jacob and Esau were twins born by Rebekah. But do you remember before they were born, before they did any good or evil? God said, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. God chose the younger twin to rule over the older before they took their first breaths. God will have mercy on whomever he chooses, and he will harden the hearts of whomever he chooses. I know you are thinking this seems unfair. Do you really consider God unjust because he chose some but not others? Doesn't the potter have any right over the clay to do whatever he wants with? Does the clay speak back to the potter and question him? No, the created thing has no right to talk back to the creator. Paul continued, God is completely just in everything he does. Instead of accusing him of being unfair, why don't you ask him for mercy? He may decide to say yes to you, even if he hardens the rest of Israel. You may be one of the remnant. You accuse God of being unfair by offering righteousness to the Gentiles who did not even ask for it. They know a gift when they see one. Jews try to earn their salvation, and that is why they will be rejected as a whole. They will stumble over the stumbling stone and will be offended at Jesus Christ. But any Jew or Gentile who believes in Jesus, that rock of offense, will not be disappointed. You must remember, if God was completely fair and gave everyone what they deserved, Everyone would need to pay for their sin in the lake of fire forever, and there would not be one single person spared. Be glad that God does not give people what they deserve. The most important verses in this chapter are Romans 9, 30 through 33, which state, What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. The thing I think the Lord wants us to understand after reading this chapter is that God will choose to give mercy and salvation to whomever he chooses. God chose Jacob over Esau before they were born. God wants people to know that he shows grace. He does not give everyone what they deserve. And that is a very good thing to the objects of his mercy. Instead of thinking that he is unfair, God wants you to turn to him and ask him for mercy. Who knows, you may be one of the chosen. And God wants us to know that salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone, 
not in performing works of the law. Most people will stumble over him and will be offended at the very thought of Jesus Christ on the cross. But those who turn to him will be part of that remnant who will be saved by God's mercy and grace. Are you part of that remnant? Or do you stumble over the thought of Jesus Christ dying on the cross as your substitute? It's not too late to change your mind if you are stumbling right now. Why don't you call out to the Lord to have mercy and to save you? Repent for your sin and turn to Jesus for salvation. He is offering you new life. Jesus humbled himself and died on the cross, and the Father raised Jesus from the dead. God said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that the Father raised Jesus from the dead, you would be saved. Why don't you do that right now? Thanks for watching the Romans chapter 9 episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Subscribe if you want to keep up with these daily videos too. See you next time.